The R Breach revamp is nearing its release. We still have got some time to wait, but as of now, a very good portion of the work is done. If you play R Breach but didn't know about the revamp in progress, I don't know where you've been living, but at least you know now. Anyways, this is going to be a short video covering pretty much everything we know about the revamp so far regarding gameplay and even a small bit of lore. Before we start anything though, I want to credit Stormin64 and that Janner's mop for helping construct everything that's going to be discussed in this video. Everything that will be said has been looked over by Ancient and one of his developers, so this information is currently true. Everything is subject to change. I was also told by an admin to inform you guys that you should not use the R Breach wiki. It is full of false information. So we're going to go over two sections. The first section will be about the leaks regarding what we know so far about the revamp and what to expect in it. The other part will focus a bit more on the leaks regarding the lore and what happens in the Arby's revamp timeline and the events that take place. So without further ado, let's get right into the leaks regarding what to expect in the revamp. Once again, I have to remind you that everything is subject to change. So, about the map itself. It will not be one site, it will be multiple sites. They will be different sizes, because if they are all gigantic, they would hinder performances, and you will be traveling between them. Most likely, there will be more than three, and the map itself will be uh, located on or near an ocean, with the zones or sites going underwater. The specific ocean is not identified yet, but it should be in the revamp when it releases. With that being said, with the map being underwater and such, there will not be a nuke like the current version of R Breach. It will be replaced with something else. My guess is it will just be a flood of the underwater, or the underground, technically, to move people to the surface. And maps will be randomly generated. So, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that. Because that means guards won't, and SCPs won't always be rushing down for. Since there will be multiple sites, it probably won't be that hard to get to the surface. I don't know, we'll have to see when the revamp comes. And cool aspect about time zones in this game. I've never seen this in a Roblox game before, but Ancient plans on doing it where there will be a server that runs on a time zone. So each server will have its own time zone. If you're in that game, and you're in that time zone that the server is running on, let's say it's day. And that, and that server is also running on that time zone then the server will be day. If it's night, it'll be night uh, for the game and for you. And let's say even if it's raining and you're in that correct time zone, then it'll be raining in the game. So that's all I had to talk about the map. Let's get into the SCPs. So normal humanoid SCPs like Plague Doctor and Abel in the current R Breach, they'll probably be Robloxian 1.0 morph to keep them consistent. So in other words, they'll be blocky. SCPs will come in waves. Um, with the first wave being SCP-106, SCP-049, and 457. I mean, obviously there's 049-2, but the main three SCPs, 106, 049, 457. So you will expect those SCPs to be in your rounds a lot when the revamp first releases. And since they come in waves, that means like the next update or so, there'll be a new wave of SCPs, bringing more. And Ancient plans on these waves being three at a time. So that's why we have 106, 049, and 457. Who knows what will be in the next wave, we'll just have to wait and see. There will also be non-playable SCPs in the first wave, including um, 012, which is the sheet music. 914, obviously, which is the clockworks. 1025, which is the Encyclopedia of Common Diseases. There's also 330, which is the bowl of candy, where your arms come off if you take more than two. There will be SCP-500, which is the pill. It probably won't be a pill due to Roblox TOS. Probably just another donut still. And here's something interesting. Uh, they plan on adding 427, which is the Lovecraftian locket, which prevents diseases such, like, such as like SCP-008, which is really nice. I don't know how that'll work, but my guess is that it'll be obtainable by putting SCP-500 inside now and 4 on fine, just like regular containment breach. All SCPs in the current Arbage version are confirmed to be in the revamp except 610. So, all SCPs, so like 096, 049, as you know, 106, 280, 966, even removed SCPs um, in the current RB, such as 173 and 066, will eventually return, so you can look forward to that. 610 will be, will be removed, but it's going to be replaced by SCP-008 for gameplay reasons which will make SCP-427 really useful. 008 will probably have nearly the same functions that 610 has. Maybe a few differences, but it's going to be relatively the same. 
Alright, let's talk about the melee weapons and grenades. There isn't really much to talk about, but I just want to point out that melee weapons are confirmed. They won't be in the initial release due to problems, but you can expect that in a later update. Smoke grenades will get a long-awaited buff, they will last a lot longer, and they'll stop at fire grenades. And maybe they'll do something against 7 who knows. There will also be a lot of new grenades that, for example, a shield grenade that after a certain amount of time, it will generate a shield around the user and protect the user from bullets. Alright, let's talk about the factions. For security detail, we know there will be tactical response units. We don't know much about them, but they'll probably have the same functions as regular security detail. The only reinforcements that will be on release are MTF and CI. All the other reinforcements will come in later updates. There will be custom MTF units. This means that Ancient will add MTF units that are not canon to the SCP lore. He will be creating his own specialized units. UIU and GRU will be removed from the revamp. GRU was planned to be moved outside of our reach. It would be its own game revolving around GRU containing 610. It was planned to be there would be multiple types of 610. The GRU had to contain it. We aren't sure on this anymore, so I wouldn't count on it. With that being said, there is a new faction being added. It is confirmed. Ancient says he's done concept work for one of them. He plans on getting this out after he gets the current GOIs in. And he may, he may add more. So that's to look forward to. Just like the custom MTF units, the new GOI will also be custom. Once again, meaning that this is not canon to the SCP lore. This means that the current theories of it being Church of the Broken God is no longer true, because once again, he will be creating his own GOI. This also implies that any future GOIs that Ancient may add will also probably be custom. If there's at least one SCP alive, a random MTF that counters that SCP will spawn. But if there isn't any SCPs alive, then it will just spawn, it will spawn unassigned MTF. GOC is getting a faction rework. Instead of most factions being neutrals, they will be marked as hostile. This is confirmed by Ancient himself. He is embracing the kill everyone mentality. So basically, instead of kill all neutrals, we will become kill all hostiles. So GOC will definitely be something to fear. Lastly, each reinforcement faction will get their own equipment pool. They'll get at least one grenade, at least one sidearm, and they'll have around three to four primaries to choose from each faction. They'll also get basic grenades, pistols, and medical equipment that all factions share. Alright, this is um, a bit more of gameplay stuff. This is just what I have marked as other, because I'm saving the most interesting for last, which is guns. If you are very low on health, your health will regenerate to a max of 25. Let's say you're on 5 HP. If you're able to escape from whatever combat you're in, let's say hide, and you remain untouched for a certain amount of time, you will slowly regenerate to a max of 25 HP. There will be armor. It will act like a second health bar. So if you have armor and take damage, your armor will go down first. Role customization is finished, so you will be able to customize any role, pretty much, and what you want with it. We don't really know the options so far, like what you can customize your character with. What I know for sure is if you have the Haunted Staircase, Class D will get exploration equipment. Lastly, there is a custom inventory system now with five slots. All right, I saved the best for last. Let's talk about guns. What you just saw is footage from a gun test, which occurred months ago. It isn't really up to date, so once again the guns are not in a finished state and it's subject to change. I don't have many points to make about the guns, but the few that I have are very important, so let's just get into it. So I'm pretty sure everyone saw this one coming, but there'll be no more bullet lag. Thank God. So many people won't even play our reach simply because of the bullet lag, which is understandable. 
To be honest, it's not really a compliment to say you're good at the game when there's bullet lag, so... <laughs> I, that's something to definitely look forward to. You don't have to rely on lag on your side. I actually think I will do better on that since I don't have to rely on lag. But what I think I will struggle on is this. There will be a new gun system, basically. You won't be able to hold shift and LMB at the same time. So you can't go in groups like I've been doing and just killing everyone while sprinting. That's pretty. That was pretty much the meta on how to take out groups. But you won't be able to do that anymore, so you have to play a lot more strategical. In my honest opinion, I do not like that because I'm so used to the current system, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. Last thing I want to touch on the guns is that your inventory will have an ammo system. So basically, your inventory will hold the ammo for you, and let's say you have an assault rifle, and you switch to another assault rifle. That ammo will carry over depending on how much ammo you have in your inventory, not the actual gun itself. Well, that's all I had to cover about what we know so far in our breach regarding what to actually expect in it. So now I'm gonna get into what we know so far about the lore. This is just going to involve teasers that Ancient and his team have given to us and what has been solved. Alright, I don't really have a specific order, I'm just gonna go how I've planned it out, so let's just get into it. So the first one we have is a video by the user Rended Rare. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but basically this is, I guess, quote unquote normal video that um, he posted, which is uh, him being a class D and successfully escaping, but there are things hidden in there that we need to go over. There are parts in the video that if you pay close attention enough, you'll be able to solve and you'll be given the leak in the video. You know something's up when the title of the video is not even, uh, I guess, normal in a way. But I'm just going to go over to the certain parts where you would start digging this leak down and unlocking what's behind it. So 20 seconds in, you'll see uh, a text which states drive.google.com slash file slash d slash. It's very hidden and it's only on screen for a split second. But that's the first part you want to know. Next. A minute and four seconds in, there's a code that can be found on the MTF name tag. It's uh, very hidden, and it's again only on screen for a split second, but uh, I'll just zoom in for you guys on it. A minute and 24 seconds in, on the bottom of the screen, there's a code in green that is stated. That I personally saw that one um, when I looked at the video myself. I think that was the easiest spot. And now this is where it gets weird. A minute and 37 seconds in, you, you see this text, and that's the final thing we need to put together to solve this leak. Now, if you go to the very end of the video, it says, there are more. Piece them together. So pretty much what that means is everything we found so far, we'll put that together in a link. So we're starting with drive.google slash forward slash d slash. And if we put everything we have so far into a single link, we will be given this picture. I, I'm not 100% certain what this is, but this looks like, I guess, the new security detail. There's tactical response unit here, and there's this uh, unit on a, the computer, which looks like he's sending a transmission. I'm not sure about that. Now, apparently in this image, there is a code that will give away a transmission. I personally don't know how people figured this one out. Um, but once you find that code, you'll be given this transmission. I'll just read it out loud. So this seems to be a distress signal and a transmission that was received from level three. We have lost contact with multiple stations. RHO dispatch reported multiple breaches of both structure and containment. RHO Axel presumed deceased. Lieutenant Chiang, Harper, and I are attempting to take the shuttle to staff habitation first and escort any remaining personnel to the surface. We were joined by two members of DSF from what they say this is a project-wide event. We will not be able to withstand a containment failure of this magnitude without external assistance. Godspeed. 
So that's all we were able to get from this leak. And it so it looks like, again, we can tell that this is a transmission, which is a distress signal. It was sent out for help because it looks like this must have been sent during the actual containment breach. In the last sentence, it says, we will not be able to withstand a containment failure of this magnitude without external assistance, which pretty much says that they require assistance during this containment breach. And then there's hence the word Godspeed, which means to hurry up. Now, there's a lot of things we don't know about this. For example, we don't know who Sergeant Shaw is. We don't know who Lieutenant Chiang is, who Harper is, or the person who's sending out the transmission. We don't know who any of these guys are, and we don't know who RHO is. Since it mentions RHO Axel presumed deceased, it, it's probably a group of people, I would assume. See, that's all we have for that one. All right, now we're gonna go over the first piece that was ever given to the community. This one's a bit harder to understand. So basically this is a picture, which looks like it reveals parts of the map. I would say this is heavy containment, and that's probably a D-class roaming around it. So apparently, if you look closely in this image, now I don't get me wrong, I don't know how people, again, found this, because I'm not that smart, but there was, I'll just show this picture. You'll be able to see this. And if you translate that, you'll be given another transmission. So once again, we're given distress signal, and this time we're given a location, which seems to be the electrical power plant sensor. Now there's a lot of words that we can't really make out here. We're just trying to piece together what we can see. So we see, looks like in the signal, it says on-site personnel requested at the request of Superintendent Knox. Again, we don't know who this guy is. And it looks like the names Foster, Gray, and Beister are mentioned. So what we do know about this is this is a distress signal at the Electrical Power Plant Center. Superintendent Knox is requesting assistance. Overseer Powell is dead. We don't know how he died. There will be storage units because of C, E, and S. And once again, this calls out the names Foster, Gray, and someone who is unknown. I said Beister, but that doesn't sound correct. This is probably a message directed to them to help. There's a lot, of, again, there's a lot of stuff we don't know about this. We don't know what happened exactly to Overseer Powell. This is probably also during the containment breach itself. And one more thing we can see in this image is a symbol. And I'll show that on the screen. This has yet to be decoded. No one knows what this is, and we probably won't know what it is until the revamp. All right, time to talk about the last piece of what we know so far about the Arbage timeline. Basically, it started off where Ancient added a new info button in the lobby. And I'll show footage of me doing this entire thing. So under a table in the lobby, you'll click this info button, and then it will show this. You thirst for knowledge, but I cannot provide. Seek that which can quench your want. All right, so there's a lot to gather from this. We have key words here. Thirst for knowledge, as in, you want knowledge. Then we have the word quench, which means to satisfy one's thirst by drinking. So now if we go to SCP-294, and then we type in knowledge, we'll be given a cup of knowledge, and if we drink that, it will say this. I do not have what you desire, a locked door can now be blown open. There you can find what you seek. Alright, so that says enough already. Basically, this wants you to take a grenade and go to a secret locked door and have a containment zone and blow it open. I just want to point out that you can access this by using 096's rage mode as well as 106, but for demonstration, I just showed myself opening it with a frag grenade. So then we're given this. So there's a lot to gather from this, but there's a lot of things we, we cannot make out, so I'll just tell you guys what we can make out. There's a collection of sites. This started development in 2023, so this is when the Arbage timeline takes place. The site was created to further isolate certain anomalies from the public. It, ha it has the word subaquatic, hence the map will be underwater. And it mentions something of Faraday Y628, which we have no idea what that is. So the last thing I want to talk about is the haunted staircase and the connection to Arbage. So if you don't know, the haunted staircase pretty much involves a D-Class going down the stairs of 087. We don't know who this D-Class is we're playing as, and it involves the D-Class having to avoid multiple monsters and hopefully reach the end. So we don't know who this main protagonist is, but what we do know from the game is that this protagonist 
quote unquote pissed off Dr. G to land him inside the harness and staircase. Again, we don't know who Dr. G is. Hopefully someone we learned about in the revamp. What we do know is that the protagonist is a D-class exploring the haunted staircase, which is pretty obvious. Now, Ancient himself said the story of the haunted staircase and its protagonist ties to the events of this revamp. It is con it's currently unknown how. It's something we will learn in a later update in the revamp. Either way, he did something terrible to make Dr. G very mad. Dr. G must be some kind of upper ranking to put him in 087. And we learned that as the D-class ascends in the staircase that, again, this something whatever this protagonist did it must have been something serious because the person who talks to the radio states that they were actually surprised that they were given access to the haunted staircase and that is everything we know so far about the r breach revamp i want to thank you for taking the time to watch this Hopefully now you have a bigger insight of what's to expect. There will definitely be more leaks in the future. I am not certain on if I'm going to do videos talking about all of them. If I will, it will probably just be when there's a large amount of stuff like this to explain again. But, but I'll see you next time.